Here we are. I'm Matt Damon. Episode three. In the buff. I'm fair, apparently. I love the comments. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I really do. Keep them coming. Specifically, Colon Sausages and D. Lee Griff. Thank you. And Monsi. For anybody Monsi beyond them, I'm John. I'm Cody. I'm Chris. I'm Scott, the fair. <laughs> oh, Chris the meth. <laughs> uh, and here we are, in the buff, totally nude, next to one another. And fully exposed. Mm-hmm. I feel short. Oh, it's this chair. Yeah, you're very high up. Mm. It's also I, this table is a little high. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever looked eye level with you before. <laughs> you never have once? No. Normally I'm from like a bottom up perspective. I bet you are. Ah. I bet you are. I find the eye contact arousing. I find the eye contact. I don't like the eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time maintaining eye contact. I I'm enjoy totally the eye contact. Yeah. In, 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 in my, you know, living. Mm-hmm. You're so close to me. Yes. I think I was talking about two different things. <laughs> uh, when I'm, you know, I just, I have, I have trouble even looking at you. I honestly feel uncomfortable. I was talking about something else. <laughs> I don't, I don't like looking at people um, when I talk to them. That's, uh, that's, it could be a sign of some sort of social. Autism. Oh. Y- yep. <laughs> yeah, autism. I was going to be a little more delicate with it, but you got, gonna... you're, you're, you're probably on a little touch of the tism there. Autismo is my superhero name. Oh. But don't we all have yeah. a little... Have That's probably how we found each other. I thought that was Boy Scouts. Yeah, I... I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. wasn't a Boy Scout. He wasn't. And you can tell. Yep. What's that supposed to mean? Old men don't like you. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fair. <laughs> Here we are. What are we going to talk about today? Because it's been about three minutes, and I think we're already losing people. Well, I want to talk about something very personal to me. Mm. Never mind. I'm not... Well, here's the thing. We brought this up. We've talked about it. A little bit. Like, what are we going to talk about? What what oh, what oh, themes are we going to hit in this episode, guys? How are we going to make people feel something? If you could go back in time <laughs> and change something, what would you change? I would have never been a Boy Scout. Really? No, I'm just kidding. I actually, I actually was a Boy Scout. I got picked on a lot, so I stopped going. Yeah. I was it me doing that? Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it was the older kids. Mm. I I've thought about this extensively. Um probably more than I should recently. Yeah. Uh because I think uh, fantasizing about time travel and what you could do differently shows an implicit sign of regret with Rug your rats. past action. Yeah. Excuse me? Rugrats. Rugrats. Mm, those little shits. Yeah. Reptar was cool. Mm-hmm. Fuck Tommy. <laughs> It's a baby. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That being said, if I could uh, time travel, I would go back to the summer, fall, let's say September of 2014 and tell my younger self or, well, so let's, let's stipulate. I am, I now returning to a previous time or do I reverse time back to a previous save state? With Dealer's all of choice. my name, with all okay, ideally, I would reverse time back to a previous save state of with all the information and knowledge that I have now, because then any reason for going back in time isn't going to benefit me. It's going to benefit that guy. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just this schmuck in the past, just li- living a new life with no identity <laughs> because this other previous version of me has it. I suppose maybe I could go forwards in time to the point right after I go back in time and hope that <laughs> the events played out. Well, that's the thing that confused me about Back to the Future. Yeah. I love the movie, but why is Marty independent of the effects of his own time travel? That's a good point. That's probably the biggest 
flaw, yeah. biggest plot hole in the movie. Well, it's because it's a different Marty. It's well, that's Marty the from the original timeline. Well, I can get into this, right? I think this has gotten too big for my little brain. So let's go this way. <laughs> Our Marty that we follow throughout the movie goes back in time to 1955, changes the past, then a new Marty is born whenever Marty was born. Our Marty goes into the future back when he went back oh, in I time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. Why would that Marty in the new timeline be friends with a man exactly. like Doc Emmett Brown and choose to go back in time? Well, I suppose he didn't really choose to go back in time. He was an idiot. and The Libyans. The Libyans chased him, uh, and he wanted to go really fast in the DeLorean, and he forgot. Right. That it was a time machine. Even also, though... I think that second Marty has a more interesting story. Because he would go back in time. He isn't the same Marty. He would go back in time to our Marty and him would be in this place at the same time. No, 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 no. Once he leaves the timeline, that's it. I don't know. He's gone. I don't know. It's, it can't be a recursive loop of infinite Martys going back in time and changing the timeline. Why can't it be? I guess I don't know. <laughs> because it wouldn't make... It, 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 he's gone. It's like it's like what I'm saying. If you were to go back in time as an actual, like in a DeLorean, and then change the past, and then go forwards, you'd have to go to a time after you time-traveled back in time, so there wasn't two of you. Chris, you want to talk about cute girls? No, I'm Chris just realizing to... that uh, Back to the Future might just have a bad premise... Uh, I mean, the premise is time travel, which is already wishy-washy. Yeah. And don't, I don't... Don't shit-talk Bobby Z. You can't shit-talk him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a real G. Yeah, you know. sure. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his stuff. What would you do if you went back in time, Chris? What would I do? What would you change? Oh, did you not finish? I'd go back to September of 2014 <laughs> and watch Back to the Future. Right. There, I said right. it. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I it, it, very very uh simple cho answer. I would just tell myself take as many student loans out as you can and buy as much bitcoin as you can. That's that's the big one for me. And then your first sell off date is December of 2017 when it hits 20,000, sell off your some coins and then it's going to crash, buy them all back. <laughs> and then summer of 2021 when it hits 65k that's your second sell-off point. And then it's going to crash and buy back some more. And then just live off the residuals. I mean, I would be, on that note, I'd be a little bit more modest. I'd go back like a year, get the first NFT. Oh, yeah. It. Get get your first board ape. Yeah. I think I could make a fair, a fair chunk of change, at the very least. I mean, there's definitely money in scamming people. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the perennial... <laughs> Uh, Enterprise. The great thing about NFTs is nothing. They suck. But the great <laughs> thing about NFTs is the people you're scamming are usually the people who deserve it. Unless they aren't. Yeah. Yeah. But, more or less, if you're trying to buy NFTs... What the fuck's your problem? <laughs> Maybe we should sell this episode of the podcast as an NFT. Oh, do you think somebody would buy it? No. I, well, uh, Can somebody tell me what an NFT is? Non-fungible token. Cool, thank you. It's basically, <laughs> and all the all the NFT bros are going to get mad at me, but it's basically like a digital license to digital content. So it's Not basically sure. you say, saying, I own this content. There's probably an NFT of uh, Side Eye Chloe or whatever her name is. Memes, oh. like I'm sure Grumpy Cat is an NFT. But yeah, yeah. they're awful. And they uh, they're just... It's like another way for people to spend money, and it's like gambling. Yep. Well, also with NFTs, it's like, it's just like there's no regulation to it. So no. I can buy an NFT that I own from myself for $50,000, pay myself the $50,000, and then put it up on the resale market saying, hey, this last sold for $50,000, it's appreciated in value, I'm going to sell for $100,000. And it's just free money. It's just free money at that point. For, for stupid people. And then the stupid people are like, wow, $100,000, that's worth, it's worth so much. I'd be a fool not to buy it, something so valuable. And then he buys it and puts it up for resale for $200,000. <laughs> not to get too far into this, there are shades of this conversation that just make me think, this is what art is. <laughs> <laughs> because why would I... I'm and with art, 
Let's say it's a painting. I'm admitting to myself that whatever I'm looking at is greater than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of paint on a canvas, but I'm looking at a Van Gogh or whatever, uh, or however pronounce his name, whatever. Uh, and I don't know, you, you, they, they sell for millions, I assume. I don't know. But why? Because they're pretty looking, I guess, but I could just have a digital of that Yeah. right now. You probably go down to your local Kroger's, get a screen print of uh, Starry Night. Yeah. Put it on my wall. You know, C.S. Lewis talked about this. Did he? <laughs> the second time in a row we're bringing yep. up the Numinous? Oh. Yeah. Oh, my yep, goodness. Yep. Oh, wow. um, he said, so, thought experiment. Okay. <clears throat> um, think of a beautiful painting. Picture it in your mind. Now, describe its beauty. It's like green. <laughs> green like shulk. Green like shulk twerking. <laughs> That'd be pretty beautiful. Wow. So, like, cute girls, right? <laughs> See, the, but the thing is, despite that brief description, you described the painting. Right. You didn't describe its beauty. Right. And so I think that, to paraphrase Lewis, he says something to the effect of just how you could never describe the you could never enumerate the beauty of an object by describing it or describe beauty to an, a creature without aesthetic experience you can't describe the feeling of the numinous it's like it, it's it's an indefinable thing right cs lewis was an author yeah that whole profession is about describing things so that makes no sense to me. Okay, well, describe a beautiful painting. Describe the beauty of the painting, then, Chris. If you're so, if you're so hoity-toity, high and mighty, talking down to little punks like C.S. Lewis. I think Chris's point is that it's easy to describe the way a painting makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's easy. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like you can describe it. You can get the whole thing across to somebody. So, oh, how we, is that then undescribable? Okay, well, if we want to if we want to describe feelings that objects elicit, then we're going to have to move over to C.S. Lewis's The Abolition oh, of Man. <laughs> Not this again. <laughs> oh. And I think we need What to would you do in train travel? <laughs> what would I do? Yeah. I'd go back in time <laughs> and make sure C.S. Lewis <laughs> wasn't born. So Cody wouldn't have the oh, new How dare about. you? Imagine. Imagine how distraught Cody would be. The that's Numinous I, raised him up. That's all I live for. He lives for that yeah. Numinous. When did, the, when did the Numinous raise you up? Uh, the Numinous rose me up around 2020. There you go, so like two years. <laughs> <laughs> Everything before then was just, you know. <laughs> darkness. Just <laughs> darkness and miasma. Uh, what would you do? You go back in time. Change anything you want. I wouldn't change anything. I would just want to experience something that is like a, like a once in a lifetime event, like being being Birth there Jesus. in person. <laughs> being there in person for it is so much different than being there on uh, experiencing it through a secondhand account, right? Which I guess comes from why a Van Gogh sells for millions and a poster sells for dollars mm -hmm. because having the uh, the uh, the finite substance of it, the actual thing, as opposed to a copy, because that comes from. And so, if I were to do that, if or to, yeah, let's do let's do that. Birth of Jesus, uh, not oh, not the birth of Jesus. Oh. Um, maybe you're one of the wise men. Huh? We just don't know it yet. Th there was a there was a battle. I forgot who it is. But he was an emperor of Rome. Uh, he became Christian after this because he saw the cross in the sky. Constantine. Constantine. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the ancient aliens uh, yes, theory? Yes. Yes. No. Uh. Well, like, if this huge battle is going on, um, before you know, uh, all the modern machinations of war, um, and then you have this pivotal event in western history going on just to go there and to see everything happening would be uh, fantastic right okay thanks <laughs> i was gonna like i was hoping for like oh i'd go back in time and there was like a huge effort to be very sophisticated there 
And it just kind of fell flat. I'd take a picture of a T-Rex. And, <laughs> I, I, you know. Watch the first, watch the first uh, multicellular vertebrates come out of the ocean. Why do you? Why do you do this? What do you? What would you do? What would you do, John? Okay, so there's like there's two options here. I either go back a fucking month and a half ago and play the fucking Powerball or the Mega Millions, whichever one still hasn't been claimed yet, and play those numbers. Congratulations, seventy-five million, right there, seven hundred fifty million. I mean, that's much bullshit. easier than yeah, Bitcoin. Yeah, Less but, steps. but with mine, uh, I get to relive college again, right? And those are some good times. You could just go back and play the Mega Millions in college. I could play all of them, actually. Yeah, that's a bit fishy if you win all of them. Yeah, uh, you'll get caught. But caught doing what? Coming Speak, back from the future? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> There's a real conspiracy theory that the lottery exists. Nobody really knows why it exists. Mm -hmm. There's a real conspiracy theory that the reason it exists is to catch time travelers. <laughs> that would be amazing that, like, the company behind, like, obviously it's supposed to be this whole government-based thing, but there's, like, a company behind it that's, like, just literally fucking the time police. <laughs> it's the time cops. <laughs> um, uh, that's why I choose Bitcoin. Yep. It's an unregulated market. Absolutely. Yeah, but then they're like, they're also going to be behind that, though, you know? Yeah, what if that's they're the like, reason we don't know who made Bitcoin? They're like, how did this man the time cops did it. sell high and buy low at the lowest and highest points the day before <laughs> they broke? We need to investigate it's this. Like in, it's like insider trading. Yeah. See, Except it's not because it's not regulated. Yeah. See, you talk, you, you made the joke about fucking going back in time and taking a picture of a T-Rex. Like, the other option for me is like, alright, I'm gonna go back to when the pyramids were made, and I want to see these goddamn aliens. The aliens doing it? Yep. And like, if that doesn't happen, I'm gonna be like, wow, way to go, man. Good job, human beings. I would go back in time to, I don't, I'm, so we talked about this briefly, you and I. Cody. Okay. Uh, I'm afraid to change stuff, because I'm pretty good right now. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm happy. I'm pretty happy, actually. But I'm afraid to change things. What if I change it in, like, what if I stop 9-11, and then, like, because the security measures that 9-11 caused didn't happen, mm -hmm. then, like, a worse 9-11, like, way worse happens, and and it's my fault. Mm -hmm. Double nine eleven. Double nine like eleven. Eighteen twenty two. Yeah, exactly. You're doing like a real Spider Man thing. I'm just saying, what if I'm? I would be afraid of of the consequences that I don't foresee. Sure. When I change, something. I think. Well, that's the that's the implicit assumption with time travel. It's right. always a monkey monkey's paw situation. So I think it would be, like I joke, but I think it would be something that I feel like would be very like a sound of thunder, the short story by Ray Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> in the sound, of, in the sound of thunder, they 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 like really emphasize the butterfly effect. Like, oh, we're gonna go back in time. We have to make like a light bridge that doesn't interact with the environment, but we can go back in time and be able to walk on this light bridge and look at dinosaurs. It would be something like that. I want to go back in time and see. It's like a movie that was like that. Yeah, is that a movie or is that a book? It probably was about? a. It was a book that I was talking about, but okay. there was a movie. I have definitely seen a movie that was like that. Uh, but I want to see. I, I would love to see just things throughout history, like you were saying. But I think the big one, if I had to pick one, I want to see what dinosaurs really look like. Yeah. Because uh, I, when I was a kid, I remember really being into dinosaurs, but it was mainly about, I've realized kind of recently, the reason I'm super into dinosaurs was they could be anything. Like, if you look at the actual fossil evidence we have, there's so much in between what what they say a T-Rex Rex is and what... I see as a T-Rex, mm -hmm. and I want to know. This came about because of that show you watched. Kinda. But, like, so there was a documentary on uh, Apple TV, <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, there's a parts that are so good. They, such good CG. But so much of it, I didn't do the research, but David Attenborough assured me that it was true. <laughs> uh, there's so much of the the way they look and behave that just, I cannot imagine how they know it. How could they possibly know that the sauropods have these big inflatable balls on their necks that they used for mating? Or how could they possibly know that, 
Like a terror. If you look at a pterosaur skeleton, it's like nothing. Mm-hmm. How do you know what it is? You want to know how they know, Scott? I want to know. It's because those scientists planted those fossils. There. Oh my oh, god! No. <laughs> oh my god! The f- the bone wars. Yep. I can't believe it. I've been fooled. <laughs> You've been bamboozled. You know who's the guy you should be watching instead of this? Eric Dobre? Is that his name? He's a fucking idiot okay. on YouTube. <laughs> Fuck you, Eric. I hope you see this. Oh my. You spread misinformation and make people stupider by existing. Chris, make sure that when you post this uh, in the tags, you add Eric Dobre. I hope that's his name. I, it's Eric something. Fact check me. Fact check me. Do it. What sorts of things is, is He's he... like one of those, oh, fossils are planted by, you know, the Smithsonian destroyed fossils because they didn't align with with uh, evolutionary ideals and that kind of thing. And uh, he's a flat earther. I see. That kind of type. And he's a fucking jerk off. <laughs> uh, 200 proofs Earth is not a spinning ball. Eric Dobre. Eric Dubé. We got him. Dubé. 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 Eric Dubé. Eric Dubé. He's Dubé. You're thinking of... Oh, I thought you were thinking of David Dobrik, but that's a different name. I don't add, know who that is. the tag, too. <laughs> He's just some fucking rich 25-year-old kid. Good for you, David Dobrik. I no, hope... No qualms with you. I, I, I don't. I don't even know who the fuck you are. I'll be honest. Know? There was a weird time where I just watched your videos when they popped up on Facebook. Yo... My name's John. I also, I <laughs> found a similar YouTube channel of this guy who's just obsessed with the pyramids yeah. and the mathematical construction of the pyramids. And he's like, there's no way the ancient Egyptians could have built these. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I want to see the fucking aliens. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You just think brown people... Don't exactly. know what math is. <laughs> it's so racist. Everything. That's the one thing about Asian aliens that I just, <laughs> I get so angry about. Because they're so sure that, oh, this is, the, this. It, they're talking about aliens. It has to be aliens. There's no way they could have done this. And the thing that really got it for me, this is a bit, this is less jokey, what I'm about to say, is I made a realization at a pretty young age, let's say I was probably a teenager, where I never really thought of the Egyptians as people. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a racist way. It was just like an idea. Mm -hmm. They were the Egyptians. They were way back. I don't know. They were like me, but who knows? They were way back. They didn't really exist, maybe. I don't know. You can't, you can say whatever you want. Uh, But it was around that time that I'm like, oh, I guess it does make sense, though. We have plenty of smart people. It seems a lot less odd to think that maybe there was just a smart person who was an Egyptian that then had an idea. Oh, we could just build a building like this. Right. You'd only need a couple yeah. of smart people. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that's Emotep. Yeah. Yeah, I think people know who he existed. And I think that, don't quote me on that. <laughs> uh, but I think that's Emotep. I think he's the great uh, Egyptian Architect. engineer. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Weirdly enough, when like we went through like history class and stuff, there is a, most of me, like, I went through the books and you take the tests and everything. But like, it, Almost to an effect, just doesn't feel like real to me. It feels like just it's too world, far away. World backstory, yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. And then I just move on because I'm like, this is never going to have anything to do with the rest of my life. This might be a symptom of our American lifestyle. Probably <laughs> America's very new, but places like India and Europe and Africa, they have a very ancient civilization there, right? But we are white and showed up <laughs> 300 years ago. Yeah. Well, I get longer than that. Well, maybe you did. I showed up 27 years ago. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> you know Oops. what? That's fair. No, he's fair. My I'm bad. fair. He's a living shit post or whatever he said. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's like talking about like a Reddit shit post or like. I honestly just a don't know what it's supposed to be. Ground, De- 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 Griff. Covered in shit. Could you clarify your comment, your last comment? Please just clarify. I know you're watching this because you watched the last yeah. two. We appreciate, thank you for watching. We, thank you for watching. We appreciate the comment. I, we just have questions. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly uh, about those two. Yeah. And the other one is the Matt Damon thing. Yeah. The Matt Damon one and the shit post given sound. I I think it's funny. It's funny. I don't know I if it's a compliment or an insult. <laughs> Maybe a little both? Why not? 
Maybe. You know, I feel like most of the things I say to you people are comments and insults at the same time. I, you know, I always try to preface speaking with people by saying you shouldn't take anything I say seriously. Yeah. I don't mean any of it. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think earlier I just accidentally agreed with racist ideology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, oh. Jessica, Chad, cats out of the bag. They are watching this. Yeah, thank God. Maybe I should tell them to, though. Ooh. Ooh expand our viewers. Yeah. Oh, speaking of expanding our enterprise. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, colon course. sausages suggested <laughs> <laughs> suggested that we make a Patreon. And so we have decided, as a group... To consider it. To consider making a Patreon. <laughs> we probably won't do it, or maybe we will. <coughs> we um, might, honestly, but we probably won't. It's probably the right route to go, but Get I think we're all just so lazy about it. <laughs> also, just the idea of... I don't know. Maybe one day when I feel that this is a bit hokey... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, guys, for what I'm about to say. Oh, no, you're good. When I look at our repertoire of content, right, <laughs> they'll be like, I could believe somebody paying for me to continue making this stuff. But right now, no. <laughs> All I'm doing is sitting here talking into a phallic thing here. And most of it was related to time travel. Yeah. Yeah. And I would be doing this with with or without the mic. I was just about to bring that up. Yeah. It's like it feels a little exploitative to ask people to pay for stuff we were just going to do anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, if you want, if you if you want, it's about the cheesh. If the, it's always about the cheesh. If the spirit takes you, <laughs> the the cheesh will almost always be going towards upgrading our equipment. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good point. Until so we get so much cheesh that we can live off of it, that it's yeah. going towards upgrading our lives. I would like to make my mom's life more comfortable. Yes, that's for sure. That's mm. why. That's why I want. I think we all. Uh, <laughs> I heard my stomach. I heard your stomach. I heard some howling outside. <laughs> I don't know if it was the wind or some lupine creature. Oh my! There's a cricket, <laughs> my god! Creature. <laughs> oh man! Get some talking points out. Yeah, man. What are we doing? All right. So we mentioned we mentioned stuff about YouTube and we did. some people. I thought we talked about Patreon. Oh yeah, no, the comment. Yep, never mind. Uh and some individuals and like some channels or, or people that we've watched. But we all grow as people. I used to watch this channel called Spirit Science. Oh yes. And it was just a channel dedicated to all of that nonsense. Is this so, like believe in ghosts? No, I think it might be came a little before bit. then. Uh, it was it covered crystals. It covered uh, mythology, uh, meditation, uh, sacred geometry, out of crystal body myths stuff, <laughs> uh, like the true Astral story. Projection. That's the one. Yeah, uh, uh, the true story of Atlantis. And then eventually, at some point, uh, this was from like. Two years in high school, and then at some point I was just like, why, "This is bullshit." Why am I watching this? None of this pertains to anything, and I don't think any of this is real. So my sister works at a boutique in uh, the the trendy entertainment district oh, yeah. of a uh, nearby city, <laughs> <laughs> and it's Dayton, <laughs> and. I thought it was Chicago. If only. Let him finish the story. You're the one that interrupted me. I followed oh, up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets... It, the whole the whole store is just, like, basically all of that. You know, there's, like, sage and crystals and, like, dream catchers and... And, and myths. And myths. <laughs> and just, like, also just, like, old people's garbage... <laughs> What do you mean by that? Like you mean like a fucking wedding album? Like you <laughs> <laughs> She work at a goodwill? <laughs> nothing oh. nothing so interesting. Oh. It'd be like a cassette tape of the Partridge family from nineteen seventy two. Okay. It's like spiritually powerful. I'm not or I'm not no, though that see that's the thing, is like there's all the spiritual stuff and then there's just like T V guides from the nineteen eighties. <laughs> what in the world? Why? It's I don't somebody I don't know. I don't know. 
it's interesting that you say a cassette tape of the Partridge family, because my old car had a copy of either a cassette tape or a CD of the fucking Partridge family <laughs> album. <laughs> Did you donate it to the, the boutique? <laughs> no, I uh, I sold the car to Chris, and I don't know what's happened to it since then. <laughs> Chris? I, what happened to the Partridge family? Uh, Whatever the car. I let it not run for a bit, and then it went bad. And then I sold Cars it. Cars do go Ex- bad. It's expired like milk. <laughs> yeah, and then I sold it to milk. my stepfather. So you he's sold him a it. lemon. I did sell him. If one. you could just follow up in the next episode with your dad yeah. about stepfather. what happened to the Partridge Family cassette, we're gonna have comments about it. I don't it. remember it being in the car when I got it. We're gonna have to find it. It was in the this. past, and it was in like the little. What's that little thing in front of the passenger seat? The glove, glove box? box? Yeah, there we go, guys. <laughs> High five. Oh. And I, well, I was visiting my sister at this boutique. These two people walk in, and the first thing this w- woman says to my sister is, do you sell pendulums here? <laughs> and she... I assume no. she gets these kinds of people a lot, and so she kind of rolled with it, and she's like, so I don't think we have any in stock right now, but you're welcome to look around for anything else. And she, and the, the woman was like, oh, thank you very much. What's your name? And my sister told her her name, and she's like, I knew that. I'm a medium, by the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and it's like, this was an odd way to have a conversation. <laughs> Asked for her name, said, oh, I knew that. Did this bitch just self-promote? <laughs> she also fucking self-promote? Yeah. <laughs> and I turned to my sister and she's like, we get that all the time. <laughs> I uh, I would love to go see... I've talked about this before. Uh-huh. I would love to go see a psychic with you guys. There's... I've been. Would you I... just sit there and what? prove them the fuck wrong? No, I'm not going to be an asshole to their face. Can you? I'm not going to be an asshole to their face. I'll give you 20 bucks. Add a zero, and we'll talk. <laughs> I might. Depends on how funny it is. Okay. <laughs> I I no. went to a, I went to like a like a psychic medium show. They uh, hosted them at a at a comedy club in Dayton. Hmm. Did and they do your reading? No, no. It was oh. they were doing like crowd work. Yeah. Um. And it was. It was. An is this int- like John Edwards? No. <laughs> the the politician no john edwards uh, what's his is it not john edwards oh is it is he like an evangelist he, he's like a I'm, I'm getting a daniel i'm getting a daniel i'm getting oh, a daniel. Yeah, yeah. uh it was kind of like that it wasn't john edwards yeah. but it was that kind of shtick and while i looking back think oh that was all kind of hokey at the time i bought into it yeah. i'm like wow this is a this is an interesting thing <laughs> right, yeah, I I succumbed to the hive mind, but it, it it was an interesting performance, I'll say. Just seeing them like do their crowd work or whatever, it was very believable to me, at least. Right, and that's coming from somebody who doesn't really buy into it at all. Like, it's kind of like I don't know having having like a ghost story or something like that where you feel embarrassed. It's like, oh, I definitely had that experience. But in hindsight, you start to explain it away, like, oh, okay, well, maybe maybe it was that, or maybe I was tired that day, or maybe it was just some swamp gas reflecting off of a weather balloon. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. Venus was in retrograde, so everything was fucked up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I have, a picture, <laughs> I have a picture at home of my aura. Oh. <laughs> what color is it? Uh, it was like... Octarine? It's good, it's good uh, it was like a green and yellowy and orange. It was supposed to show like your chakras. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Um, and according to all the things that I've done, my heart chakra is is a uh, way overdone, and my sacral chakra is way turned off. Your sacral chakra, that's like in your butt, right? Yeah. What's uh, your cock chakra? Your, your cockra. My cockra. Yeah. Uh, it's also non-existent. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. <laughs> huh. I understand almost none of this. What is, it, what most is, of it is not to be understood. Yeah. Okay. What, is, what does an inflamed heart chakra mean? Uh, I, I allow my emotions to 
take control of me more often than I should. Yeah. Let's I mean, you that. you are a fucking crybaby. <laughs> oh. I'm just on. kidding. I'm joking. Not really. He isn't a child. I'll cry later about it. I, I think you cry you. just a normal amount. I think you're very in touch with your emotions, and that uh, is exciting to me. <laughs> I like saying that. There's really no pendulums? They didn't have any at Those the store at the time. Common. Man, way to turn the conversation. That was what, good. What is a pendulum? What, what so, use does it have to, so, to this kind of thing? All right. So they take a crystal. He's so excited. <laughs> they take a crystal, and they cut it so it's a cone with a, uh, uh, like a little ring at the top, so you tie a string to it. And then you... Oh, and the bowl of sand, and you... Yeah, okay. and you just let it go. Yeah. Yep. And it's supposed to, like... And what does that do? Take the future, or tell you, like... He, uh, so it's just, people... like, another way to scry. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I thought we were talking about, like, the balls that just, like... No, that's a Newton's cradle. Go through each that's other. a Newton's <laughs> cradle. Joke. I guess those are kind of like pendulums. They are. Huh. They're very similar. It's like a pendulum with... Uh, extra bits. Extra bits extra, there. Extra, extra steps. So... But I no, don't believe in any of that shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, it kind of makes me a little bit, I don't want to say angry, it annoys me. The idea that, <sighs> like, it's the kind of same bubbling rage I feel about goblins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, where He said he was going to get there tonight. Where yeah. it's just like, do you need this? Why do you need this? I'm not going to attack you, but, like, if it really does something for you, great. What the fuck does it do, then, for you, people who get into it? And I just, I look at that, and, and again, it's my own confirmation bias, probably targeting their confirmation bias, where I'm like, I see a coincidence, and they cannot see a coincidence, and that infuriates me. It, it kind of is the thesis statement of everything we've been talking about yeah. whether it's like ancient aliens or the mathematical complexity of the pyramids or uh, pendulums <laughs> <laughs> or chakras or time travel or time travel sure yeah that's the through line time travel mm -hmm. flux I capacitor probably had crystals in it if I could time travel, I'd go back to before we started recording this podcast. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> How long we been going? 40 minutes. Fuck me. <laughs> oh. Well, the reason I had brought up spirit science to begin with... Oh, was you're I saying we derailed? Yes. <laughs> 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 was I wanted to ask you guys, uh, what are things from your past that you've let go of? That I like, we were into, and then yeah. realized this Cause, is dumb. Because I got really into all that stuff, and then eventually I was, I literally was just like, "Let it go. I don't need this anymore." Was Did that I ever... because of me? No, we weren't. We weren't really hanging out. I'm giving it yeah. to me. <laughs> um, I might. I mean, the the times might coincide though. Maybe you meet me. Oh, spirit science. That's dumb as hell. And then... Just saying. You guys got any of that shit that he just talked about? <laughs> um, hmm. I'm not really sure. I mean, I've definitely grown out of things. I don't play with Power Ranger toys anymore. But, like... Because <laughs> you don't have the time. You are yeah. a very busy person. And, I mean, like, they're at my parents' house. Hmm? I'm already too lazy to build a Patreon, so, like, I'm not gonna fucking drive over there to play with these things. There's also Gundams over there. I would play with Gundams still. You had a big that big white tiger Zord, dude. It was awesome. Zoid was it Zoid? A it was liger? Zord. Was it a liger zero? I think or was it, was it Zord? Zero. Oh. I think it's Zoid. Zord is I don't like remember. Zord. Mega Zord? Zord. Zord is Power Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zoid yeah. was the animal. Yeah, dude, those things were fucking dope. The animation in that cartoon was awesome too. I disagree. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> I can't think of anything that I in. I'm sure there's some. I'm certain there's something. I don't know. I I don't. I don't pick up a lot of things. There's not a lot, a lot, a lot. I don't pick up a lot of things. There's not a lot of. Oh. <laughs> I don't pick up a lot of things. There, so there isn't a lot to let go, for me. I said I got it. You did great. Took three tries. Yeah, I can't really think of anything either. 
I've gotten a lot less socially awkward, but I think that's just growing up. And, How'd you do it? Uh, Asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, it just took a lot of like self reflection and like almost losing a couple of friends. Mm-hmm. Because they're just like, why are you so fucking awkward, buddy? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I never associate you with being awkward, like even before. That's because you're comparing me to present company. I guess. Wow. I guess I am. <laughs> Way to throw John under the bus like that. <laughs> I've always felt really awkward. Dude, you know I never pick up on the fucking butt of the joke stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Let's cut that. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, let's just cut this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> let's just start over from the top. Time people. travel. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, maybe tell us your talking points to begin with, and or then maybe like s- send them out like a day in advance, so yeah. then we can think about yeah. them. What do you guys? None think? of these were. I thought of uh, spirit signs in the middle of this thing. None of them were. So you're telling me we haven't gone over any of your talking yeah. points. What's a talking point? Well, you actually get... said one of your talking points was spirit signs. You lied to us. No, that was that was in the moment. Uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, well, I guess we did cover one. Uh, I wanted Scott to get mad about something. Goblins. What? And we mentioned <gasps> goblins. Yeah. You just want me to get mad about I something. I don't think anybody mentioned goblins. I didn't get mad about goblins. I just, I recognize that they make me angry. Mm-hmm. You know what I love? Hmm. Pandas. And you pain. can't <laughs> pimp me out like this. You can't do this to me. I'm also a fan of penguins. You cannot. <laughs> I will stay strong. I'm not sure what this is in reference to. Uh, Just like their survivability, like, you know, where they're at and... You know, yeah. all their natural wonders. It's not my fucking problem that a penguin chooses to live in Antarctica. Fuck you, penguin. I'm uh, living my best life in a place that's actually good to live in, you fucker. But they're so diverse, they could live on almost anything. Some of them do. Some like of them... volcanoes. <laughs> okay, well, I, no, maybe not I, there, they, but... Why? Why do they choose to live there? It's not my fault, penguin. I'm not going to feel bad for you. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall the penguins asking for any sympathy. <laughs> they don't have, if they could, they would. Uh-huh. They don't have the, the fucking ability to, because they don't have the get up and go attitude that humans do. That's true. God damn it's you penguins. That's why penguins are fairly low on the food chain compared to humans. Yes. That honestly <laughs> that's why I do, that's why I don't feel bad about eating animals. Because it's like it's survival of the fittest. Yeah. If you didn't want to get eaten, you'd do better than me. <laughs> like, like that's a joke, but for real, the way I rationale it, <laughs> rationalize, rationalize it? it in my head is, uh, you trying to fuck Sorry, me? no, <laughs> stay away from my feet. Uh, the way I rationalize it in my head is, we are such a successful predator that most of us don't even need to hunt. Yeah. And I think that's fucking badass. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's awesome to me. Can you imagine if, like, if a lion were so good at hunting that the entire pride didn't have to do anything? One lion. That's what it's like to be a human. If one lion out of the whole pride were just so good at hunting zebra, then none of the others would have to do shit. Oh, but, see, that's the thing, and that's why humans are on top, is humans don't like not doing shit. And so, in this... It, it, they get bored easily, and so they start doing stuff. So, further to to further pile on to your scenario, all this all those lions in the pride that aren't doing anything, they start you know putting their heads together, start developing rifles and rocket like mounted rocket launchers yeah. to put on their back to hunt the zebras even, <laughs> even better. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we could just blow that zebra to fucking bits. And then, then like, there'll be a, a lion fundamentalist who's like, we've really moved away <laughs> from what it means to be a lion. Man. Yeah. I can't even eat this zebra. It's just a bunch of bits. Yeah. Are you saying that Chris is basically Simba because he chose to eat bugs? Where Chris chose fish. Will we have a, a lion like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, let's put this one in the harbor, huh? <laughs> let's park it in the 
Hey, we can't. Let's, let's park it in the garage. <laughs> Listen, I think we've reached a really interesting point, though. Have we? Where it's like, okay, so obviously, hey guys, not all our content's going to be great. We have to buy hide so like, But now we have a moral dilemma choice of, do we cut this? If we cut this, we probably never make a podcast again. We are cutting this shit. No. This is great. I'm glad. Episode Cody's every silent. Thursday. I Honestly, I would have preferred to do the opposite of cutting and kept riffing on that lion bit. Oh, yeah. But you kind of derailed that. Yeah. Uh, well, we can get a moment of silence and re-pick it back up. No, nah, it's kind of lost <laughs> it's, its touch. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, it's, it's, the, the, the lion back. luster, I think it's called. The, the, uh, the luster. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Let's say it in a weird way. That'll make it funny. You know what you call a lion that's like dresses very well? What? A dandelion. Do you know what you call somebody who is green and twerks? Shulk. <laughs> is the answer to that one. It's not much of a joke. No. Was it supposed to be a joke? But I want to talk about it. You want to talk about Shulk? Shulk? We Shulk? haven't seen it yet, but Shulk Cody, Cody busted something for us. What do you think it oh, will be like? trust me. That wasn't the only thing busted. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you will feel when you see that big green mommy doing a twerk? I don't like being sexually aroused near my friends. <laughs> okay. That's a great answer, Chris. <laughs> you pulled that one out real quick, okay. and it was right I, down the middle. I agree. I don't like when you're sexually aroused near me. I also Wait, don't him, like him specifically? Yes. Or? <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, That's good. That may, Speaking of that, I've never been to one. Strip clubs are so weird in a route. Oh. because of that specific thing that he just said. I'm just gonna be with my friends and be like aroused together mm-hmm. with them. Yeah, that's so weird. Well, we are so close to this now, so now <laughs> we have to say it. Chris made no. a stripper cry. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, that that's how we're gonna end this. We're gonna end this. Let's let's break out a story. You cannot tell it because you're so trash. You I'll tell, tell the story. I'll tell it. I'll tell it. So back when Chris and I used to live together uh, with our other roommate, Jalen, um, Jalen and I convinced him to go to a strip club with uh, with us. And, uh, you know, he's he's socially awkward, like pretty much all of us are, except for Cody now. Uh, <laughs> he's grown out of it. He's grown. <laughs> Let it go, just like that spirit science. <laughs> but uh, we're there, and like, you know, I'm helping Chris relax, get some fucking drinks in him. You know, starting to enjoy the room. And then I'm like, hey, you know, like, you know, what, what's your type? Who you like? And, you know, he pointed one out. He pointed out, I don't remember her name. Do you remember her name? We'll say Megan. Um, that was not her name. It wasn't. Good name. Um, so I, I gave Megan the money for a dance. And I'm like, hey, can you go give him a dance? On the way home, well, I asked him how it was. Sorry. And he was like, no, it was all right. And then, like, cut to, like, two hours later. Only dance he had all night. Uh, he, you know, we're asking, like, what were the details, like, what he liked, like, did they talk about anything? He's like, yeah, I, I shared some of my poetry with her. <laughs> and, and Jay, <laughs> just, it was a two for one dance. So, like, he had, like, six or seven what, minutes what with this chick. What does that even mean? Two, two songs for one dance. It's such a we. I hate this concept. <laughs> it's a weird currency. It is, it is. Um, and then he told us the poem. And then he was like, yeah, it was beautiful. It made her cry. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you're supposed to be getting a fucking heart on, my guy. Oh, my God. Cut that. What's going on? <laughs> Cut it. So Chris made a stripper cry. He made a stripper cry. John, correct me if I'm wrong, but you strike me as somebody who's uh, very comfortable in strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really go often. Um, but I mean, I've I've gone there before. Like, you wouldn't be like Chris and start reading poetry to a woman no, giving God, you a lap no. dance. No. But, I mean, I almost dated somebody that worked at a strip I club remember once. this. I remember this episode of your life. Like a bouncer? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was... That's good. That's good. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> You're gay. <laughs> No, I went to I, I went to school with a female bouncer. Uh, she was very nice. 
Like she told me I should be a bouncer, and I told yeah, her. you shouldn't. Be. I don't. Oh, I don't have the shouldn't. mentality for that. No. Oh, I don't oh. think you have a lot of things for her. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's incredible. <coughs> yeah, fucking nailed, dude. Oh. I am made wildly uncomfortable by public nudity. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good thing I'm in a in the buff podcast. Right yeah. Well, it's exposure therapy. Yes. Uh, yeah. The only way to confront your fears is uh, you know to face them. We joke, but I genuinely do that. <laughs> I don't like it when people touch me, so I touch people to make it, <laughs> normal, to make oh. it feel normal. It hasn't worked. <laughs> well, Fuck, fifty-three I mean, minutes is yeah. enough. Oh, that's perfect. Does anybody have anything else to say? I mean, uh, I just had a dumb story, but I'll leave it alone. Oh, maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> on our on our anniversary of episode when we, three, when we return to the conversation of strip clubs and how comfortable I am in them, I will tell you about the time that I got kicked out of a very high end strip club. Ooh, okay, and my face got put up on the wall as a non returnable customer. Oh my I'll say God. this: I don't I don't like strip clubs. I don't patronize them. But if you do, for God's sake, patronize them if yeah. you're there. You gotta pay. You can't just watch. They're, these women are working. You gotta give it to them. Paying for college. They're yeah. also trying to hustle Except you, dog. Probably not anymore because they're getting all their student loans forgiven. Oh. We're, oh. we're gonna run out of strip clubs. Me and a strip club have something in common? Even more supply chain problems in the future. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you gonna read your poetry? <laughs> let's uh let's wrap it up <laughs> the only pr- the only way you get people to listen to it is if you pay them to listen. <laughs> oh that's so sad well, and on that note everybody have a great time i hope you had a great time rather and uh we really pulled it around there in the last yeah, like five minutes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. for everybody that stayed there should pay off <laughs> there what are you gonna draw this time <laughs> i know are we draw <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.